there's been a lot of interest in the microbiome over the last decades, um, both in cancer and in non-cancer settings. There's been a number of studies looking at progression in terms of immunotherapy and its role in relation to the microbiome. And there's also been a lot of interest in terms of metabolic and other diseases. Quite often, the studies that have been done have been of observational design, uh, so case control or cohort studies, often a small number, perhaps 100 or fewer patients. And it's very difficult to pick apart correlation from causation in those studies. So what we've done in this study is we've used a, a technique called Mendelian randomization to see whether we can add to the evidence to suggest that the microbiome might play an important role in, in breast cancer risk. What Mendelian randomization does is essentially uh, use everybody's genetic variation as a proxy for the gut microbiome. So in this study, we use genetic variants that are associated with features of the gut microbiome that we have taken from a large genome-wide association study of Europeans that was published in Nature earlier this year. And then we took that same genetic variation and we looked to see whether there were links between that genetic variation and breast cancer risk in another large genome-wide association study um, of around 130,000 cases in 100,000 women. And what the results of this study showed was that there is evidence for a link between the, the constituents of the gut microbiome and breast cancer risk, both in overall breast cancer um, for a particular strain or genus of bacteria called Ruminococcus, but also, and perhaps more importantly, in triple negative breast cancer, where we found two positive associations, one that was protective against um, breast cancer risk, and another that seemed to be causal. Now, these results are early. They need taking um, with caution. Um, we need to work out how these gut microbiome traits are influencing breast cancer risk. So are they influencing it via other metabolic pathways? And we're undertaking more work to see uh, the mechanism through which they may be having their effects. But perhaps more importantly, and I guess the question for people at the conference is, do we start to target aspects of the gut microbiome and I think the, the caution we need to take there is we don't know what effects um, targeting the gut microbiome will have both on other aspects of health, so non-cancer diseases, but also perhaps cancer itself. So some of our other results show that the same type of bacteria can increase or decrease breast cancer risk depending on the molecular subtype of breast cancer, and therefore changing the gut microbiome might have other unforeseen consequences.